giving birth is one of the blessings that has helped planet Earth to perpetuate human species. But giving birth comes with its own suffixes and plurals. In this presentation, I am going to discuss one of the nine means of giving birth. I am going to talk about what is called uterine rupture. My name is Mr. El Chitumba. I hope I find you well from wherever you might be at this point in time. In a nutshell, uterine rupture is spontaneous steering of the uterus that may result in the fetus being expelled to the peritoneal cavity. Uterine rupture is rare in reality. It can occur during late pregnancy or active labor. Uterine rupture occurs most often along yield scar lines in women who have had prior caesarean section deliveries. So, ruptured uterus post C section. So, when, after that operation, there can be separation of the uterine tissue, and the separation is called uterine dehiscence. So, during that period, after the operation, the, the surgical skin can actually heal completely, or it might fail to heal. When you fail to heal or there is infection, what can happen is there can be extra uterine bleed via the dehiscence area or the scar line, which is not healed completely. The scar line can also complicate due to infection, and there can be pus formation that can either collect in the peritoneum or in the uterine cavity or there can be communication between the two spaces. So what you are seeing here is a typical example of what is called uterine rupture. This is a gravid uterus. You can see there is a fetus here and then here in the lower segment you can see that the uterus is actually ruptured. So separation of these muscles that makes up the uterus is called dehiscence. So when this happens, you can actually have membranes protruding, protruding from the womb. And when they protrude like that, the risk can be if this opening is big enough, the fetus can be expelled. So when this is not big enough, the fetus might come out but blood can actually leak via this scar line and then it enters the peritoneum. So when it enters the peritoneum, you can see dredging of free fluid around here and it goes up in the upper quadrant here and it can then be seen in the Morrison's pouch or in the Cooper's pouch, which is the splenorenal orifices somewhere here. Here is an example of a uterus. As you can see, this is a uterus, and then this is our fallopian tube. Then, what you're seeing here is the ovary. So, here is our cervix, and we have our vagina here, and the phonix of the vagina, which is somewhere here. So, what we are seeing here, that is the outer layer of the uterus, which is the perimetrium, and then here we do have got our myometrium. But you can see here, there's an opening here. And the contents of the uterus, they are actually protruding into the peritoneal space here. So this is an example of uterine rupture. It's either the contents of the uterus, they actually are expelled or blood can actually leak into the peritoneal space. So, when you're doing an ultrasound scan, what are the sonographic features that you're supposed to to look for to ascertain that it is a ruptured uterus. Okay, so here are some of the things that you have to look for to identify to suspect 
but the E could be uterine rupture. You can identify protruding portion of the amniotic sac. From the last illustration, you've seen a protruding membrane to show that there is a rupture of the uterus. You can also identify an endometrial or a myometrial defect or the, the scar like that I was referring to as uterine dehiscence. You can also look or identify intraperitoneal fetal parts. In the event that the fetus is still in the uterus, you can actually identify it in the peritoneal space. Then you can also find extra uterine hematoma. So when there is an extra uterine hematoma, that can also be a marker or an indicator of a ruptured uterus. But this is not all inclusive or exclusive. Uterine rupture on its own is not the sole cause of extra uterine hematoma. Things like aortic aneurysm on the rupture, they can also cause collection of blood in the extra uterine space. So there are many causes like trauma, fast positive can also cause a hematoma collection in the peritoneal space. The other thing that you have to look to for is hemoperitoneum or free fluid. So if you see free fluid drenching the peritoneal space, you can also think of uterine rupture. So here is our case scenario. We had this patient, so this patient delivered a 4.2 fetus by cesarean section. And post cesarean section, the patient continued to experience pain and then he, she was referred to the ultrasound department to assess if there is anything that might have caused the pain and the swelling of the abdomen. So upon doing the ultrasound scan, here are some of the findings that were noted. So playing this video, you can see the space that we have here. This is our right kidney. Then you can see this is some urine which is here in the calcium spaces. Then what we have here is a potential space between the right kidney and our liver. This potential space is called the Molson pouch or it is also called the hepatorenal space. Under normal circumstances, we don't expect to see free fluid in this space. So when we see this free fluid, it can be suggestive one of ascites. It could also be suggestive of a peritoneal bleeding taking place. So playing this video, you can actually see this hypoechoic collection here in the Morrison's pouch, which is depicting our free fluid that we suppose was caused by bleeding into the peritoneal space. So, basically, what is the hepatorenal space? A hepatorenal space is a potential space that is found between the, the liver and our right kidney. In this potential space, we can find collection of free fluids, be it ascites, be it blood that you can find in the events like when there is a trauma. So we don't have only one recess in the body. The other potential spaces that we have to look for when we are doing an ultrasound scan are the splenorenal recess, which is also called this the coolest pouch. So it's another recess or potential space where you can find free fluid. We also have got the pericardial space. So basically when you're not doing an echocardiography study, 
You also have to assess the pericardial space in the events like EFAST. You also have another recess which is called the suprapubic space to check if there is no free fluid around the bladder in the event like uh, fast might be a significance of a rupture of the urinary bladder. So as I said before, this is our hepato renal space. This is the Morrison's pouch. But you can see this cannot be assigned is why because the fluid is containing some internal echoes so when there is some internal echoes like this this might be suggestive of internal hemorrhage or it also could suggest bowel rupture so the bowels can actually contain uh, the internal echoes that can be seen in the peritoneal space in the event that there is a bowel rupture. But now, correlation of the history of the patient vis-a-vis -vis the ultrasound findings can give us an almost definitive diagnosis. This patient presented to the radiology department with this post C-section. And prior to delivery, she didn't have this collection. So this collection was only found after a caesarean section of a fetal macrosomia. So assessment of the nature of the free fluid is very critical. Free fluid that is internal echoes is a highlight as I alluded to before can be suggestive of internal bleeding or it could suggest bowel rupture it can also suggest of pyoperitoneum or pus collection in the peritoneal space as you can see here the free fluid that we have in the peritoneal space is actually containing some internal echoes it's not clear and a quick fluid to suggest ascites so you can see there it is infected ascites can also present the same but due to the fact that this patient is had a cesarean section the most likely diagnosis is this is extra uterine hemoperitoneum or blood in the peritoneal space So here you can actually see the psoas muscle here, somewhere here, then you can actually see the collection that is going all the way to the Morrison pouch. Now, it is very critical when you're doing an ultrasound scan to assess the peritoneal space. Here in the peritoneal space, you can actually see the full fluid or you can also see ectopic pregnancies in, the, in that space. We are looking at the pelvic region. You can see our uterus here. There are no obvious arapioses that we are seeing here. And then we have got our urinary bladder which is here. And then in the potential space around the uterus, we don't see obvious collection, but the uterus is still bulky, postpartum, and then as you go up here, you can actually see there is a collection that is all pronounced in the Morrison's pouch. Pelvic assessment is very critical when you are suspecting uterine rupture. As I said before, you can see in, tra on transverse, section, in transverse section, this is our uterus and you can see that the uterus is clean. There are no arapioses that you can see here. No arapioses. You can see these are vessels. These are vessels. Then you can see there's a little bit here of what we call adhesion. So this is adhesive tissue which is here. So we do have got a, a, a little bit of adhesions which you can see in that area. So 
around the uterine region we are not seeing any obvious collection so the Morrison's pouch in this case scenario was the one which was dredged with this is our Morrison's pouch region upon assessing this sonographic finding the most plausible diagnosis that we come up with was hemo peritoneal so this patient was sent back to theater then it was found out that the uterus had ruptured and it was, it was actually leaking blood into the peritoneal space i thank you i hope you are well i hope you are enjoying our tutorials don't forget to subscribe and share our tutorials if you have got any contributions that can actually improve the way or if you've got suggestions to make you can actually get in touch with us we are free for your suggestions we are also free for whoever wants to participate in our platform sharing knowledge i thank you be blessed see you next time thank you